Yo, I'm Lotus Latry, and this is No Band Certified. My name is Lotus, Lotus Latry. Um, that's the long version, but you can just call me Lotus. Uh, I'm looking at you. Yeah. I'm looking at you. Okay. Look at me. Hey, what's up, mom? On TV. I know you ain't believe I was gonna be a rap. You thought I was gonna be a singing ass nigga. That's not happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm Lotus, Lotus Latry. Uh, I'm an artist. I do a lot of other shit, but like everything is pretty much to further the art. Like I take pictures, I direct, I edit, and shit like that. But all of that's pretty much to further the art. I really. Everything that I do is to further me as an artist. Like I direct, I edit, you know what I'm saying? Like everything is for that. I was born in Staten Island, came home after the hospital to Brooklyn, stayed there for like six, seven years. Uh, moved to Atlanta when I was like seven. And then like every year I would go back to New York for the summer. Come back to Atlanta, New York, Atlanta, New York. We did that for a couple years and then just finally settled in Atlanta uh, when I was like 14. We just finally settled. Uh, I've been everywhere though. Like when I first got here, we stayed in Panthersville, Candler Road. Uh, I stayed in Lithonia, I stayed in Stone Mountain, I stayed in East Point, I stayed in Fairburn, I stayed in goddamn, what's the shit that's below the airport, Forest Park? I stayed College in Park. College Park and Forest Park. I've stayed in. So you was all over. The city. I've I've been all over the city and the not city. So yeah. yeah. Not Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. 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 Not Atlanta. I would get into fights. I was beating niggas' ass, bro. <laughs> but I was beating niggas' ass because I just didn't know myself. Now let me stop. That's that's totally cap. <laughs> I just wanted to beat, bro. You ever had a nigga try you, bro? Like on some bitch shit, like. This is my phone. You gonna come up to me and be like, I want your phone. I'm gonna say no. And you gonna be like, all right, I'm taking it. Like, what the fuck you think is finna happen, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm finna I'm finna beat your ass, bro. I'm finna beat your ass. Fast, fast. Or I'm just, I'm gonna try it. But I, I fought a lot. I played video games. I love video games. Uh, shout out to Switch. Oh, shit, I probably fucked that up. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Shout out to Switch. Um, I'm having really intense deja vu right now. On camera. This is crazy. Um, I'd probably say the most prevalent lesson I've learned in the last couple months is like, bro, you just gotta try, bro. Like, everything starts with you. When you be thinking like shit's going wrong and shit is happening to you, it's your fault. But as good, cause it's also something you have total control over. Like, it's not your fault, but it is happening as a result of the path that you've chosen and you can alter that path whenever the fuck you feel like it, you just have to feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Like whenever you feel like, oh shit, this is going wrong. Like it's something you're doing and you can only blame yourself for that. And that's a good feeling. And that's also a bad feeling because when it's really bad, it gets overwhelming. But like when you sit down and think about it, you're like, oh shit, I can do something about it. That's, that's a great feeling. Like I don't have to wait on you or my mom or, or Uncle Sam. Sometimes you gotta wait on Uncle Sam. I mean, fuck that crack ass nigga, bro. <laughs> but but yeah, it's, that feeling yeah. of having complete control over your life is terrifying. Mm -hmm. But once you conquer that fear, it's like you, you lit. Can do you you lit it, fuck. Yeah. Why you think I'm here, bro? I ain't come here for no interview, nigga. I came here to change the world. And then you happen to get an interview. I happen to get an interview, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> nigga. My most authentic self. It's when I'm at the crib, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Like when when my mama called me. That's that's who I really am because like I'm really him, but like I'm really her son at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, like I'm always gonna be her son, but sometimes I'm more so like Lotus Latry the artist as opposed to blank blank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's let's bleep out the government. I can't say that. I can't tell you that. But I'm. I'm her son, you know what I'm saying? I be chilling at the crib, I be playing video games, I be cooking, bruh. I'm a great cook. I will, bruh, if I cook some shit for your girl, that is my girl. That's our girl. <laughs> that, that is my, look, she can be your girl whenever she leave, but when she get, when she's eating my food, 
she gonna be eating my dick. But I have a girlfriend. I love her very much. Um, I would never take another woman. You know, that is terrible. I love my girlfriend so much. I am faithful. I have never cheated. I promise I will never cheat. Something about that shit like a lie. Mm. <laughs> I love my girlfriend, and she knows that. And so we're gonna leave it at that. Yeah, we're gonna leave it at that. Man, I gotta. You ever looked in the mirror? <laughs> I'm gonna take that. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, nah, bro. But um, a bitch ass nigga is. It, it can be just a lot of shit, like a liar. Um, like if you cap, you a bitch nigga. If you um, manipulate people, you a bitch nigga. Uh, if you are a different person around a different set of people because you want different things from those people and you're never your authentic self, you're a bitch nigga. Cause like my mama knows I act like this, bro. My girl knows I act like this. My teachers know I act like this. My my all of my family know I act like this. But also the artist community knows that I act like this. That's why like. If there's anything that, like, if anything can say anything, if anybody is to say anything about my character, what I have done can already vouch for me. It doesn't matter what the fuck you say. I don't care if you said I'm the worst nigga in the world. It's a thousand people that will say otherwise. Like, I don't, and I don't live on the internet. Like, I'm my most authentic self right now because I don't live on the internet. Like, that social media shit is cool, but like, I don't stay there, bro. That's not my house, nigga. I pay rent, bro. I got bills to pay. Like, I'm not finna... No. Y'all niggas is caked up on the gram, nigga. Like, acting like y'all big shit, bro. Go outside this city and realize you are nothing. That's very humbling, nigga. But even outside this city, I'm that nigga. Like, niggas, niggas show me love. I'm I'm that nigga. I'm really that nigga. I forgot what the question was, but I'm that nigga. What is a bitch-ass nigga? Oh, what's a bitch-ass nigga? What's a bitch-ass nigga? Uh, a bitch-ass nigga is a nigga who, who, who be on the bullshit. He be capping, he be lying, he's a facade, he's flawed. And you know, when you see him, you just want to grab him and like beat the shit out of him. I act different around white people than I do around my niggas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's out of safety, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all y'all cool sometimes, but you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all have a very bad history of doing shit to niggas. So, like, yeah. forgive me if I'm a little different around uh, a Karen than I am Katrina, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So, but yeah, I definitely feel that, like, you're not a, you're not a bitch-ass nigga for doing that, but it just sometimes, sometimes, like, you know when you act in a way to get something as opposed to acting away just because it is the it's the right thing to do in the moment basically like a nigga you know he's, he's one way when the homies are around but then as soon as yeah. the bitches come through soon as the bitches come through up, like acting up. Yeah. nigga wanna play fight and shit bro you I just knocked you the fuck out last time you did this bro why is you playing yeah, like, why are you trying to flex on me right now yeah, yeah. okay alright I'm not gonna lie I have a lot of vices like video games like once I quit social media I was going so od on the video games like i was catching up on shit because i was like man i had a brick to do that but i think to stay off social media um i kind of immerse myself in my work and if not my work it'll be my vices like video games or i just catch up on being a person because the social media is a different realm it's a different world so the way I stay off of it is I catch up, like, I gotta tap into who I am as a person. Like, I have a, I have a calendar beside my bed. You know, I put down my goals, what I wanna do for the week, what I wanna do for the month. I have a morning routine, I stretch, I meditate, I read a book, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do a lot of things, like, just to stay centered. Cause my routine, cause if I build a routine around something that's not real, i.e. social media, I get up, I post at 7 a.m., I post at 12 p.m. I post at 4 p.m. and you know what I'm saying like I tag everybody I've ever worked with in my life that shit is so mechanical niggas don't niggas don't give a fuck about you bro niggas don't give a fuck about that shit bro like it works when it's authentic and it's happening in the moment but I be going places with niggas y'all be like not y'all specifically but the the groupie niggas be shitting their pants like oh shit you with you with that I'm like yeah but like that's because I'm really there and I'm really him I think it was just cause like, 
and this is the biggest thing it goes back to that point i was talking about earlier like you having to do your everything like you're in control and i realized like i wasn't in control of the things i had the ability to control like it's certain shit i can't control like i can't control like the gas prices but i can control whether or not i'm going out you know what i'm saying like and in that sense i was able to be a director i was able to be a videographer you know what i'm saying but i wasn't doing it because i didn't want to but i have the ability to do that and i think it's important to take control of what you can if nobody else is going to do it and then pass it off when you can because like that's how you get shit moving if you just stay stagnant because x y and z because oh somebody gonna do this shit for you like you got to keep that shit rolling bro so i started editing my own shit i started uh directing my own shit i started um taking my own photos like i had to do everything i had to do to get to where i wanted to be so i didn't really listen to music until i was like in middle school but I would always hear whatever my mom played on the radio or like her CDs, like she really liked R&B and shit. So that's why she thought I was gonna be a singing nigga because that's all I knew. Yeah. Shout out to Loki. Um, uh, yeah, so she thought I was gonna be a singing nigga because that's all I knew. But then I heard rap and I was like, this shit hard. My brother used to rap, um, very inspired by him. He stopped rapping, but I still kept it going because I was like, this shit fire. And yeah, it just took off from there. It really took off from there and I honestly just want to be able to shift the landscape in which we operate in now because like how shit be going like with the music like this shit cool but it's also like it's also flawed in the sense that niggas is competing for algorithms like you really got to be outside bro like you got to be outside and once you're outside and you know what that means you don't necessarily have to like stress about it because like it's just gonna come. I know it's gonna sound corny, but I do it for the kids, man. Like, I just wanna be able to like put on for the people that don't know. Cause like, I'm telling my, right now, the chapter in my life, I'm telling my story. But when, you know, I'm done telling my story, I want to, you know, tell the story of the people, like the history of my people, like black people. I'm Puerto Rican too, Puerto Rican people, you know what I'm saying? Like people with single moms, people with, uh, you know, like they just go through shit, like that be hopping from hood to hood to hood to hood. And you know, my mom did a lot to keep us out the hood, you know, thank you for that. But you know, sometimes we would still be in that motherfucker or you go to school with some hood niggas, hood shit be happening, bro, that shit follow you home. So I wanna be able to like tell the story for them to relate to it and like us to all realize like we're one in the same, like as people, like we're all the same. Oh yeah, I never stopped. I just stopped posting about it. <laughs> Y'all niggas thought I wasn't doing shit, bro. Who the fuck? Who the fuck that, this? Who the fuck this nigga thought, bro? I've been rapping. I've been I rapping. Know you're still putting out music. Nigga, I'm <laughs> making bangers behind the scenes, but it's it's all good. Cause when y'all see it come together, y'all gonna be like, oh, that's what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Same so, same shit. Loki was talking about, bro. So what's the day? Like, when is the plan? Like, is it already set? And so like, all right. Oh, I'm my next sing my next single is already done, bro. Okay. My project is already done. Okay. The album's done. Okay. You gotta. Date no. Keep, no, no, no. Nah, I can't get out of date, but it's gonna be done when it's done. And I know, like, because like niggas think I hopped off the grid, it's gonna be that much more impressive to them and more satisfying to me when I'm like, nah, I've been working the whole time. I've been working on a, a masterpiece, like something that will stand. Is this nigga listening to music? I heard it, nigga. Obviously. Yeah, we heard it. <laughs> but yeah, when I come back, y'all niggas gonna see. I got a project with Trill. Okay. Like Trilly. How many songs? It's like six songs right now. That whole shit is a banger. Okay. Whole shit is a banger. Uh, I have a couple songs I did. Um, I have one song off my project. It's called One in the Mill. That's a really good song. And I have this uh, song called... Uh, how the hell it's gonna be coming out my boy third world very soon i don't know when that's up to him but i got a couple songs that i just keep putting on repeat and i slow down with the creative process because i know like if it gives me that feeling it's good and if it doesn't keep it pushing so yeah i, I got a couple i got a couple songs and i'll play some shit after this bro okay, yeah, yeah, yeah i play some shit yeah i could follow me on can i look at the camera yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which one's the better camera this is more close up okay I can follow me on 
social media. I'll be back soon. I mean, I, I'm really there, but like I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lotus Latry, L-O-T-U-S-L-A-T-R-I. That's Twitter too. And uh, yeah, y'all probably not gonna see shit until shit pop off for real, for real. But y'all gonna like it. It's gonna be good. What do I have for the people? Get off your motherfucking phone, bro. Get off your fucking phone. You too, nigga. Get off of your phone. Go outside, read a book. You know what I'm saying? Like, just realize that right now is passing you by while you're watching this interview too, but this interview was your wake up call, so this doesn't count. But reality of the situation is shit is passing you by and life is gonna, it's gonna fucking suck when you look down at your phone and you look up and you have kids and then you look down at your phone and you look up again and you're on your deathbed. Like, figure this shit out, bro. Like, you're you're the answer. You got it, bro. Yeah, this was a great interview. I actually really, really enjoyed this one. So I'm glad you came through. Cool. Appreciate you for coming through, man. Yeah, man. Lotus. Lotus Latchery, IDB, you did.